Hey everyone, uh, the purpose of this video is to demonstrate the Ziegler Nichols PID tuning method to tune the controller for a pump tank that's in the Control Station Loop Pro Trainer software. Uh, but before we go through and do the simulation or go through the process, let's look at some of the information or details about the process first. Okay, so the Ziegler Nichols tuning method, it's a fairly straightforward method. It's, it's a closed loop process, which means your controller is turned on. And so essentially the way it works is you have your controller turned on in P only mode and you apply step changes in the set point. And upon step changes in the set point, the goal is to increase the value of KC until you achieve sustained oscillations. Okay, so this plot right here shows a step input change and then the process response achieves sustained oscillations. And once you have the sustained oscillations, you can calculate the um, ultimate period, which is the distance between two peaks. Um, you can also... I typically don't get that from two peaks, but I'll take the average of three or four peaks to get a better measure for the period. Um, then also you have the ultimate gain, and the ultimate gain is the value of the gain that's used to achieve the sustained oscillations to a step input change and to a step change in the set point. All right, and now once you've achieved these, once you've, once you've determined the ultimate gain and the ultimate period, you can then calculate your P, PI, or PID settings depending on the mode of operation of the controller. Remember, if you have an integrating process, you can use a P-only controller. If you have a fast responding process, you can use a PI controller. And this will generally be about 90% of controllers used in the chemical process industry. Um, and then if you have a relatively slow process, and that's defined by a process where the dead time, the dead time relative to the time constant is greater than one, or, or theta over tau p is greater than one. If it's between 0.5 and one, you can decide PI or PID. Typically, PI is preferred because of stability. All right, so let's go back to the control station software. All right, so here's our system. Um, I'm going to go to the controller, put it in PID mode, uh, make sure the integral term is turned off, turned off, and I'm gonna go ahead and just increase this gain and start it at 50, just to see how that works, and so now, I'll let the process run for a minute. Okay, and let's do a step change to 4.4. Okay, we can see, you know, not a lot of, not, no sustained oscillations. Let's step back down to four. Okay, so what this means now is that I need to increase the gain. Let's try 100. Okay, we have 100 on the gain. I'm gonna go ahead and step up to 4.4. All right, we're doing a little bit better. We have some um, oscillations that are slowly damped out. Step back down we see the same type of behavior. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and maybe let's try 150. All right, so gain of 150, set this to four. And look at that, we have, it looks like about sustained oscillations. Now if I had more time, I'd let this go a little bit longer. But anyways, we can use our ultimate gain of about 150. If I look at the period of oscillations, maybe it's hard to read from this chart, but I'm gonna say, you know, 114 to 136 for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So 136 minus 114 is 22 over seven. So about 3.1-ish or so. So we can get the, the tau i uh, based on that information. Okay, so this, or, or that's the ultimate period. Okay, so now we have the ultimate period and we have the value of the gain, which is 150. We can use those values in table 9.3 to determine the gain, reset time, and derivative time constant for the PID settings. Okay, well, good luck with tuning your controller using the Ziegler-Nichols PID tuning method. 